Hello everybody, I'm Nick Kenneth. Today I want to show you a different way that you can return data in C Sharp and .NET. Now this might not be my personal favorite way of doing things, however it is a way that's becoming more and more popular and I can totally understand why people would like such a way. And this is using the package called OneOff to have discriminated unions in C Sharp. If you're familiar with more functional languages or maybe F Sharp, you would totally understand what this is. If not, I will show you this package in this video. I will also show you how you might have seen things to be done to explain what problem this package is solving. So if you don't care about that, you can click on the timestamp you can find on your screen right now to move to just the one-off package part. If you want to have the full context and see a couple of ways you can return stuff, please stick around for this video. This video is part of my Essential NuGet Packet series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe or ring the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new video. So, what I have here is basically three projects. Um, they all do the same thing, but they do it in different ways. And the first thing I want to show you is what I have in this project called With Exceptions. As always, you can find this code in the description down below. I will go to the Users Controller, and I have a very generic Users Controller where I can create a user by full name and email, very basic stuff. And then I have a get endpoint where I can just retrieve that by um, ID. So if I run this and I use Postman to call um, this API, let's see what happens. So I can get a user that's already in there. And that is me, as you can see, this is being returned. And then I can create uh, a user by clicking uh, by making a post in that endpoint and clicking send and this now created as you can see to one created a new user in the system which i can totally uh, use this id and get back as you can see it's being returned but then if i go ahead and create a new one with the same email there's already one with this email so this should throw an error and as you can see we get a bad request email exists and also if this email is malformed you will get an invalid email error. So as you can see, we have some validation that's happening in our uh, API. So where is this taking place? What we have here is a user service, which I will go to the interface, which has a create user method, which accepts a user and returns a user, the created user. And then you have the get user by ID, where you give a good and you get the user back. Now, I totally understand that um, this might be uh, crossing some boundaries in terms of domains. For example, the API domain is bleeding into the, uh, well, the application layer, and then the application layer is bleeding into the response. Um, this is done for efficiency for the video, but obviously you would have uh, request response contracts uh, and domain objects. In this case, I will just blend it in. Uh, the, pr the problem would still be the same, no matter what. So I'm going to go to the implementation of this interface. And as you can see, we have an in-memory sort of a database uh, thingy. And then what we have is an email validation check and an existing email uh, normalization check to see if the email already exists in the dictionary, uh, which is something you would have in your queries when you're trying to create somebody. If I quickly stop this, you will see that I'm actually throwing a new bad request exception every time something bad is happening in my uh, service layer and if i go to this error class you will see that i have pre-created a few uh, expected errors so an email uh, already exists error and a not valid email error and they have an error code and a message for the api to show when they happen and how are they being handled well i'm actually going to restart this api i should have stopped it in the first place um, I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint um, maybe in this filter, this filter called bad request exception filter. I'm going to show you what happened. Now, this is an I action filter, which has been registered in our startup.cs here and will get triggered in an order as part of our uh, middleware sequence. So what will happen here if I click this? Um, let's, let's cause an error. If I have a bad email, what's going to happen is the request will go through this. And in fact, let me quickly put a breakpoint here as well to show you the full flow. I will trigger this again. And you can see that 
I, uh, I'm hitting this endpoint, the create user. The user throws an exception. And because this exception is thrown, it goes into the on action executed method of my action filter. And then it's checking if the context has an exception. And indeed it does. And this exception is a bad request exception. So it's going to get that. And then it's going to extract from my ex exception the error. As you can see here, invalid email. And then it's going to convert the result of this API to a 400 status object request, which is a bad request, basically. And then it's going to say that exception handled true. And it's going to return that on the um, API level as a bad request object. So this, you might have seen this approach around. Um, the reason why I do not like this is because we're effectively turning exceptions into something that they shouldn't be exceptions are exceptional cases for things that should rarely happen that you want to handle in a special way they shouldn't really drive the business logic of your application so throwing exceptions which also has a performance impact by the way is not the best way you can go about this but nonetheless it is a way i've seen things being done and I wanted to bring this to your attention. So this is fairly bad, but you can still see it and it works. So I'm gonna close this project off and I'm gonna stop this one, it's already stopped. And I'm gonna open this one, which is called uh, with result. Again, you can find all this in the description down below. And I'm gonna go to this uh, user controller, which is exactly the same behavior as we saw before. The difference is that in this scenario, we are not throwing any exceptions. Instead, if I go to the same iUser interface, we now return a result of a user. And what is a result? Well, in my previous video, I covered the option um, struct, which is part of the language extension package. Well, the language extensions also has an object, a struct called result. And this result has effectively two states, a faulted and a successful. It can have a value, which, ha which means it has a successful state, and it can have an exception, which means it's a bad state. This doesn't mean that the exception was thrown, but the exception was returned as part of the result. And let's see this in action, because it might sound a bit confusing. We're used to throwing exceptions. I'm going to go to the implementation of this method, and I'm going to say that now, instead of actually throwing new bad request exception, there is no middleware. I just return it. So if I run this project again, just to show you how this works, and I'm going to put the breakpoint here, you will see that this is now stepping in here, trying to create the user. It is an invalid email, so it will return a new result of type user with a bad request exception as the exception returned in the result. And this is what we're returning. And now what we will do is we will match. So the dot match method will allow us to match based on a successful event or a bad event. And let me just take a break point here. In this scenario, we have a bad scenario because we returned a result with an exception in it, not a successful result with an object. So if I press F10 here or whatever it is, uh, skip over in your debugger, it will take me in here where we'll check that the exception is a bad request exception, which it is, and now it will return the bad request with this error. So now instead of actually throwing the exception, we're returning the exception and then we're doing some matching to get the error out of it. Now this is better than before because we don't actually throw the exceptions, but now we're using exception objects to specify some domain level logic. And what happens when you have more types of exceptions like this, like a not found exception or an unauthorized exception or some sort like this, where you want to have different types of um, responses and not just bad requests for 100? Well, this makes it a bit more complicated. So basically what we want is this create user method to return technically more than one thing based on some situation. For example, tell me if the user did not have a valid email, or tell me if the email already existed, or tell me if it was successful. And this is what we will try to do with the package one off. So let me just close this because we don't need to look at this anymore. And I'm going to open the with one off package. And this package has basically a boilerplate, same project, 
but instead of returning um, some type, we're returning an object just so this compiles um, to show you how we will actually use one off in here. And again, it's the same user service, and instead of actually returning anything, we're just returning dummy data. So this is where we're going to plug in one off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, NuGet, and I'm going to say one off. I'm going to find the package called one off, and I'm going to install it. And now, as you can probably understand by the name, we're going to use discriminated unions using one off to return more than one thing and then match on it. I'll show you how it looks. It's actually pretty neat when you look at it. So I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to go to the user service. And let's start from the interface. So what I want to do is not return an object, but I want to return one of a few things. So if the user is created successfully, I'm going to return the user object. However, if there is an invalid email used because it's not formatted properly, I want to return uh, invalid email. And if the uh, email already exists, I'm going to say email already exists. And these are objects I don't have yet, and I'm going to create them. And for performance purposes, they don't need to be uh, objects because I'm going to be newing them up. They don't need to be classes. They will be structs. So let me create a new struct called invalid email. And this can be empty. It can have a property. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Email already exists. Now remember, structs are located in the stack. And the way they work is different from classes. This is not a topic about classes and structs. I assume you know how they work. If not, I'm going to link something in the description you can take a look at. And now our method returns one of these three things based on different scenarios let's go to the implementation and i'm going to return this object I'm actually going to convert this to this and now look how this works if the email is not valid i'm going to return a new invalid email here and this is totally acceptable because one of has implicit and explicit operators in it to accept this type of conversion automatically and then if the email already exists, I'm going to return a new email already exists here. And if the user was created fine, I'm going to return the user. And that's it. Now, all I need to do is go to the user's controller. And since this is returning one off a few things, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to say user one off dot match. And I'm going to match every single one of the things that can be returned by this method. First is the user, so the user was successfully created. If this happens, then return OK with the user object. If you have invalid email, then return bad request in this scenario with a body of errors dot not valid email. And if in this scenario you have an email that already exists, then all you need to return is bad request, same type of thing, um, email already exists error. And of course I have to specify the type because uh, the way these methods work, they don't explicitly specify that they return an action result. So I'll do this, and then I'm going to allow Rider to optimize this a little bit. And that's it. Now if I take a breakpoint here and show you how this works, I'm going to run this. I'm running the wrong project. I'm going to run the uh, one off. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to the program and I'm going to say run it from here. So this is now running. I'm going to go back to Postman. And again, I have a malformed email. In fact, let me just go with a good one in this scenario um, and run this. And as you can see, no issues there. The user has been added. I'm returning the user. And now the user, if I put a breakpoint on this, actually had to put it in here, which is quite tricky. But as you can see in the response, I'm getting an OK, the user was created. Because this was automatically matched to a user object and it returned OK here. If, however, try to create the same user again, you will see that this check will detect it and this will return a new email already exists object which means that when one of matches it 
it will go to the email already exists bracket and it's going to return the appropriate error email already exists and of course if this is not a properly formed email it will return an invalid email because it's going to match this one obviously this is becoming a bit long so there is a way to actually shorten it you can put this in a separate file and then implement the one-off base class which should be this one and as you can see we can uh, replace it that way but for the purpose of this video i'm not gonna dive so deep into this but i want to show you this way because i'm personally a bit on the fence on this uh, way of doing things I really like the idea behind it, but I don't think that you can properly implement it in C Sharp. But because I appreciate the effort and I like support the community, I want to bring this to your attention because you might like this approach. And I don't think there's something fundamentally wrong with it. It's just not my cup of tea, but it might be yours. And that's totally fine. I highly recommend you go to GitHub. You can find the link in the description down below to give the project a star. Of course, this is a very limited use case. You can totally extend this and expand it because as a project becomes bigger, you might want to match on multiple things or you might want to break this down even more and you might want to do different things based on different branches. But it allows you the flexibility of not having to deal with exception-driven flow and anti-patterns that will effectively mess up your code and make it harder to debug. Here, everything is very visible and you can tell exactly what's happening. I don't need to go into middlewares. I don't need to return tricky exceptions. All I need to do is say, I'm going to return one of these three things and you have to handle all of them. At least you have to describe how you would handle all of them. Uh, the package is actively maintained and you can do a lot of other things other than just matching. You can switch on them, you can map them and you can try to pick some or you can say hey, if it is this or if it is that or cast it as this one and basically this is the biggest shortcoming I think with the package that you cannot have some dynamic creation of IntelliSense because as T0 means as the first type in the type array in a sense but it doesn't really tell you the object it's not as user and it's not as invalid email you have to hover over and dive deeper into this and that's where I don't generally am a fan of. But I can still appreciate uh, the fact that people like this. And I'm act actually actively using it in several projects. It's just that the implementation is as good as C Sharp would allow it to be. But that's not necessarily the best it can be, if that ever makes sense. And I think with future iterations, it might be allowed to become better. That's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you liked this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding.